Welcome back, and for this one, I'm going to be split up in two different videos. The first one that you're seeing right now, this is going to be highlighting 10 players I think were absolute steals in this year's draft. The, the second part is going to be players that I think were taken a little bit too high. Not knocking them as bad players, but just, you know, a little bit of overreach, not better players available, or not necessarily a team need. But for this one, I, I just want to go over uh, players that were absolute steals in the draft. Most of them were players that just fell to them, honestly. None of these really were trade-ups. They were just uh, amazing picks that just fell to them. So starting off, I'm going to start with the first round with Nolan Smith, pick 30. I did not see him falling this far. In my mock draft, I did have him in the early 20s, I believe. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I maybe had him even a little bit higher than that. I think maybe I had him going to the, the New England Patriots, if I'm offhand. I'm not entirely sure. But I did go at much higher than 30. And the fact that he fell all the way to 30 to the Eagles, that already traded up to the ninth overall pick to select Jalen Carter, I think is a massive steal. He is a bit undersized for an edge rusher, uh, 6'2", 236. There are injury concerns with him, especially last year where he only played eight games. He had seven sacks and 18 tackles. And even when you look at his stats, he has missed a few games each year, which is a little bit of a concern. But I think overall, amazing value at 30. Again, the only knock on him is, well, two knocks is his bigger one probably is injury and also just the undersized against 6'2", 236. But I think overall, amazing value at 30. The fact that he felt to him, I, I'm sure he'll flourish in that defensive line. The Ari has other uh, Georgia players on there. Jordan Davis, another teammate for the linebacker, and a Kobe Dean. So it's definitely going to I definitely think he'll thrive in that spot. But I think amazing value at 30. Jumping back up, I had Jordan Addison at 23 for uh, the first round. Again, a little bit a smaller wide receiver, six foot, 175. But in my opinion, the best wide receiver in this draft class. Many people already uh, point to Jackson Smith as the clear-cut number one. I have Jordan Addison as that. I think he was an amazing player, amazing route runner. His previous season at uh, at Pitt, he went, went for well over 1,000 yards, was absolutely dominant, transferred to U, uh, USC. In his, season, his, sole, his only season there, he had 63 rece- or he had 59 receptions for 875 yards, eight touchdowns. Now, granted, it doesn't pop off compared to his pit, his uh, last year in Pittsburgh, but Caleb Williams kind of spread the ball around, and you, and you, you break it down for the, all the players in that year. A lot of people did definitely were similar to what Addison had, but Addison was a, was clear called the best wide receiver in that team, and I think it's an amazing spot for 23 to pair him up with the reigning offensive player of the year in Justin Jefferson which defenses are going to shift their priorities to him to shut him down. And I think we'll open up one-on-ones for Addison. I think he'll definitely thrive. Obviously, the quarterbacks this year is going to be the clear-cut favorites for the offensive rookie of the year. But if you push him aside, I really do believe Jordan Addison should be really up there and be considered as a potential favorite for uh, offensive rookie of the year. Outside of that, of course, it's Beecham Robinson and maybe Jamari Gibbs. But I think Addison should really be up there because I really do believe in him being that great of a wide receiver for them, especially replacing Adam Thielen. And we also don't know what the future of Dallin Cook is, which might put a little bit more of a workload on him in his rookie year. So next we have Joey Porter Jr., who fell to the second, the, fir- the first pick of the second round, pick 32. Supposed to be the first round, but with Miami forfeiting their pick, the 32nd pick was the number t- of the first pick in the second round, and that's where he went for the Steelers. Great size, 6'2", 185. That... Uh, offhand, we look at interceptions. Doesn't have a lot. Only had one in his career, but was a was shut down this year. Uh, passer rating was sixty three point six. Not too bad, but when you look at what he gave up, he only allowed thirty receptions for one hundred forty three yards, zero touchdowns. That is unbelievable. I am as high up there uh, for the corner, you know, for the cornerbacks draft class. I know you can go back and forth between Witherspoon and Gonzalez, but I really do believe Withers, uh, Porter Jr. definitely has a be in the conversation of. Potentially being that. Of course, I know the obvious ones. I wouldn't take him over Witherspoon or Gonzalez. But again, I think he can definitely have the argument for up there. Especially being a, falling to the second round, which I think he could have easily went into. Well, I'll get into another corner that I think he should have went over in my, my next video for bad picks. But no doubt, an amazing value for the Steelers that I think really do desperately need the help in the secondary. Pair him up with... Mika Fitzpatrick, I guess he's a safety, but in secondary in general, pair him with other great talents like Mika Fitzpatrick, I think it's definitely going to help. And also having the history with his father and so forth, it's amazing how it turned out. So next one is Osiris Torrance in the second round, uh, pick 59. I'm surprised he fell this far. I had him as a first-round talent. I'm pretty sure I had him as to the going to the Dallas Cowboys, and I really thought that was a big need for them. 
helping the interior see that they would like to run the football. Uh, the last few years, it hasn't worked out with Zeke Elliott, partially because he's kind of just been worn down. All the part is just the offensive line aging, getting injured. And I think that should have been an amazing need, especially with them running the football. He is great at that. Uh, and the fact that he fell all the way to the late second, got a 59th overall pick, is an absolute steal for the Bills. For you know, I really th- should have been a first round talent in the mid to late first. Uh, pro fo- football focus game 88 for his his rating. He has zero career sacks or given up zero career sacks in his flat in his three years, which is unbelievable. Again, uh, people go back and forth if he is in terms of pure guard the best interior offensive lineman in this year's draft, at least at the guard position. And again, the fact that especially in the you know the, the running ability. So the fact that he follows a Buffalo that that needs desperate help at the interior offensive line and that wants to I was in, you know incorporate James Cook much more and take some pressure off of Josh Allen that is an amazing value basically getting a first round basically just getting two first round picks along with Kincaid this is technically kind of as one as a first round pick falling to the second round so next one I have is Jalen Hyatt he went to the third round pick seventy three. Some people have him going a little bit higher. Now, for the Bills, personally, some people put out there saying he could have been a first-round pick for us at 27. I saw others that had him higher, in the, like at least in the late first going. So the fact that he fell to the third, I think, is great value for the Giants. People question his uh, route tree. I think when you see a lot of highlights, it's just you know running down the field wide open, which is obviously good or ba- good and also bad, just because you don't know his route running ability. He's six foot 176, so. Basically identical to Jordan Addison to his size. He has 67 receptions for 1,267 yards, 15 touchdowns. He was dominant with Hennon Hooker and also Tillman with being the also the other wide receiver. They went off this year. And you kind of also question too if he's is he a one hit wonder because his last two seasons were polar opposites. He just had barely over 200 receiving yards in 2021 and 2020. He has breakout year in this past year, along with Tennessee in general with, as a team. But I think at the very worst, he can be used as Isaiah McKenzie, pairing up with the Bills with when uh, Brian Dable was here. I think he can be a Swiss Army knight, knife, a gadget player, and definitely use on like end of rounds, motions. So for I think Brandon Bean, or not Brandon Bean, uh, Ken, Brian Dable, my bad. I keep getting so many people confused with Brian Dable with his offensive creativity. I think he can easily find ways to give him the ball, scheme up plays for him. And it's, I think at the very worst, just scaring de- uh, secondaries for him, being afraid that he's going to go over the top, get wide open like he did in his in uh, Tennessee's last year and open up the field, you know, the shift pressure to him to kind of, uh, you know, stop him from going over the top, maybe have the secondary uh, relax a little, push a little bit far back, and it opens up the, the open the field for the rest of the receivers. And I think, that, like, I think that's amazing value at the third round. Again, pick 73. It's amazing. I think he could have gone a little bit sooner, but amazing value at third round for the Giants. Six, we have uh, Demon Jones, tackle from Ohio State. He he wins the fourth round, pick one eleven. First off, the biggest thing that just jumps off to you is size. Six eight, three forty seven, massive tackle. It's gonna be very hard for a lot of edge rushers, anybody in general, off the edge to get around him. The big concern on him, at least what I heard, was. How passionate he is for football. I guess, you know, another one similar to that is Josh Rosen. How committed is he? That's the only knock I've really heard about him. Not sure if it's true or not, but I have heard of that. If besides that, again, amazing value, a huge tackle, especially for the Browns to help bolster the offense line, help Deshaun Watson out, could potentially be a starter. And I think, again, amazing value at the fourth round to get a big size like that. Uh, alongside his teammate, Paris Johnson Jr., who went in the sixth overall to the Cardinals. I got, I think, amazing value in the fourth round. So next we have Israel Apagadempa. I probably butchered that last name. I apologize. He went in the fifth round, pick 184. Amazing speed. He clocked in at one or uh, 429 for his speed, for his four-yard dash. Amazing home run hitter. Great size, 5'11", 216. He had over 1,426 rushing yards, 20 touchdowns. He was unbelievable. He had that one great game against... I don't know if it was Virginia Tech or who was exactly, but he had over 325 rushing yards, six touchdowns. He was dominant. He is in a little bit of a crowded backfield with, of course, Brees Hall, Michael Carter, uh, Knight, who really emerged late into the season. So, again, it's going to be very interesting how he fits into that. But I think, again, he can be kind of used as similar as a home, you know, a gadget player, similar to what I said about Jalen Hyatt, just with his speed. I think his speed alone could definitely scare some uh, teams depending on 
the situation where they're on the field. I think it's a great value at that spot. Sticking up running backs, I have Eric Gray, which I know I should know really well as a Sooners fan. Uh, fifth round pick, 172 to be exact. 5'9", 207. Outside of Marvin Mims, who went last in the second round, he was an amazing running back. Um, great, you know, I thought he was great at catching, especially at uh, making defenders miss, either juking them or just breaking tackles. I think he was definitely big in that, especially moving the chains on third down. He was huge on that. Again, the size isn't too crazy, 5'9", 207. But I think that is definitely a huge pickup for the Giants, especially if you don't know the, the future with Saquon, who's a free, who has refused to sign his franchise tag. He could definitely be in a rotation that, that helps. Like I said, he, he had over 1,374 uh, 1, rushing yards, 11 touchdowns. He also added 34 receptions for 220 yards. So again, uh, a receiving back, no doubt. Not saying he, you know, if Saquon or play, you know, if Saquon sat out that, oh, this is going to be a one for one. Uh, transition, you know, there's gonna be no dip from, you know, dip of production. But I think it's a very, you know, solid value, especially in the fifth round. I think it's, I think it's great value for the Giants bolstering that. Why are the running back group? Next, I have Andrew Voorhees, who was taken the seventh round solely because he had he tore his ACL at the combine. If he did not, he would have been easily, I believe, a second, third, fourth round pick around that range. 6'6", 310, pro football focus had an 80, 81.9. He only let, let up two sacks in his last season there. Again, I think he, he was a great guard. It was just unfortunate that he tore his ACL in the combine. So the fact that he fell all the way to the seventh round, pick 229 to be exact, is amazing value. He's not gonna. He's most likely not going to play this year. It's more of a stash player, developmental one. And, and you should probably look at 2024 as a potential uh, starter, at least you know in the rotation, at least for... The offensive line. But again, I think amazing value at that spot. Huge steal, in my opinion. Last one I have is Brian Branch going to the second round, pick 45. I really thought he was a first round talent. Uh, many people didn't as well. I am at the, I think, the very least going in the late teens, early 20s. I think I had him somewhere around there. If I'm mistaken, I maybe had him at the Buccaneers. But for him, the fact that he fell to the second round for the Detroit Lions, who need secondary help, seeing that they just traded Jeff Okuda, I think it's amazing what they picked up. The only knock on him is a nickel corner, but for, for amazing grade. Pro Football Focus had an 89.5 on him uh, in terms of where he where he lined up on the defense. Most of it was at the slots. Uh, 569 snaps were at slot, 136 at the box, 24 was on the defensive line, 14 at corner. And in his career, he's only had four missed tackles. So he's very versatile, great at tackling, but most importantly, again, very versatile on the defense, has played multiple uh, spots where he's lined up. But for the most part, it, it, you're looking at a slot corner for him. And I think that is the knock why he fell to the second round. But nonetheless, I think it's a huge talent, huge knee in the secondary. You look in the first round, they did add Jamari Gibbs, the 12th overall pick, went on defense with the 18th overall pick with Jack Campbell. So the fact that they were able to land Brian Branch, who once again, you know, kind of similar to Osiris Torrance, uh, basically getting a first round pick in the second round, that's amazing for them. Amazing value that he felt so, and I think I know he'll do well in that in that defense. But that's going to wrap up my picks for uh, steals in this year's draft. Again, like I said, I'm sure there was plenty of other ones, but I just picked 10 in my opinion that I liked. Um just try to go from quickly. Didn't want to take too much long, too long on each of them. Just want to get a quick, brief overview of why I am as steals. Again, the second video will be the opposite, of course, being players that I think were a little bit of overreach, in my opinion. But with that being said, let me know your thoughts down below. If you like the list, if who would you would it who would you add it to the list as a steal? Let me know down below. Uh, with that being said, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.